today guys um, still healing from the back surgery so might be a little bit uh, out of it <laughs> um, today I am drawing a Boma from Dragon Ball Z uh, I might have to take a couple breaks uh, back still not 100% playing some video game lullaby music uh, you can't see too much right now because it's still in the blue pencil stage. Uh, I am using a, a figure of Boma as reference. Uh, it's when she's dressed up kind of like as a Playboy bunny. Uh, it's I believe it's from Dragon Ball, but I really like the pose on this figure. So that's what I'm drawing today. I'm not as high energy right now. Uh, as you know, you most of everybody's ever dealt with pain knows how stressful it can be. Uh, yeah, it's been a stressful couple days. Uh, luckily, I had a lot of videos that I hadn't uploaded yet, so it kind of helped me, you know, keep up with the schedule on the on the channel. So right here, I'm kind of just drawing out the pose. Uh, it's a little hard too, because uh, this machine that I have with me, or on me rather, uh, it's, it's kind of makes makes me shake a little bit. So <laughs> uh, I apologize if there's any shaking going on. Uh, I want to credit the original designer of this f um, figure. Uh, it doesn't say who it is, um, but it is a toy made by uh, Brickitos Figure Art Figure Arts. Okay, from H Y H Hong. So he did the original uh, figure. But every now and then, uh, to kind of keep me fresh, I like to draw uh, figures because. I'm not duplicating somebody's art, it's more of a of a toy. And I, I always say if you need a reference, uh, toys toys are a really good reference. Uh, I wanted to make her a little bit more plus size. Uh, I don't like drawing uh, <laughs> you know anorexic women. So it's it's more fun if if I draw, you know, more full figure women. And this is one of the things I always tell people if uh, they want to get better at art is to draw the female form. Uh, actually drawing an actual female, uh, a real life female, is more important than drawing uh, you know, anime, anime style. Um, but I, I prefer it. I prefer to draw women. Uh, I, I learn a lot just by sketching uh, women. You know, because I'm a man, so <laughs> being able, you know, I, I can see myself, you know, it, whereas it's hard to get a uh, a model to do pose poses for you, and a real life pose always looks better than in, in you know, like a, a one that you find on the internet, a picture. So right now I'm just sketching her hair out. Uh, the hair is going to help me kind of measure out where the eyes are going to be more than the ears because Akira Toriyama's style of drawing uh, is not uh, traditional. You know, the ears are bigger. Uh, the eyes are a lot bigger. You know, your typical anime style. So uh, whatever you need to figure out the measurements, that's really important. So... Uh, I wanted to live stream. Uh, it's just with the pain, uh, I'd rather be able to, you know, take some breaks here and there. So recording it's a lot easier. And this is the part of the sketch that you want to make sure that your uh, anatomy is correct, because once you start sketching with pencil, 
uh, it's going to be harder to pick up those mis uh, those mistakes when you go to the ink stage. Uh, and I, I'm sorry for the vibration in my voice. That's that's just the machine doing it. I'm just working on the ears now, and now I can start sketching out the face. Uh, so the bottom of her eye kind of starts underneath or above the ears so that's where we want to put your guideline and another another guideline for the nose and then the mouth obviously I'm gonna tweak it a little bit to you know to follow my style but we want to stay as true as possible to the source material which is Dragon Ball and it's subtle differences from Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z uh, the chin is a lot more pronounced in Dragon Ball Z. In Dragon Ball, it's kind of a goofy looking chin. I say goofy, it just, uh, I guess it matches the series more because Dragon Ball was more known for its comedy than, uh, than the actual shonen part of it. I mean, it was still shonen, but. So now I'm just drawing the, the back of the hair. and then go for the eyes. Now Boma's eyes are a little trickier so I'm going to try to make it my style. Big, big beautiful eyes. You know if, if you draw smaller eyes uh, it kind of uh, relays anger whereas big eyes is happiness and uh, full of life. Just like in real life, when someone squints at you, it kind of conveys anger or confusion. And then when someone has big open eyes, it, it's a warm, warm, like a warm welcome. So it's the same same uh, concept with you know drawing an, anime and, and cartoons. And then her eyebrows are kind of lost in her hair, but we still want to sketch it in there. So now the sketch is somewhat, um, somewhat finished, and now I'm going to go with the pencil stage here, and this is where your details are going to start to come to life. And it's okay to be as loose as you, as you want to be, you don't have to get super tight with the lines, you just want to kind of get the details in there and try to stay as light as possible because like I said you, you, you're still gonna find mistakes uh, here and there and correcting the mistakes and even if you draw light then you can find little mistakes later and you can erase them easier this is more about getting getting the actual picture going here so you have something to look at. <laughs> and then I'm going to draw the, the bottom of the bangs where I want the bangs to show up. And you don't want to like, unless someone's commissioning the piece from you and you want it to and they, they're asking for it to be just like it but if if you're just sketching for fun like I'm doing right now um, you can kind of take some liberties with it you don't want it to be a carbon copy if someone wanted a carbon copy they should have asked for a photocopy <laughs> the reason why they come to you is because they want something original Kind of like that Vegeta I did um, earlier this week on, on the channel. It's actually an older picture, but I couldn't release it until the person got their commission. Uh, I try to stay as true to Vegeta as possible, but I also added a little bit of myself, my, my style in there. you want to make sure that it's perfectly aligned 
obviously people aren't perfect so you are gonna find little little mistakes here and there and that's okay now the face is starting to come come together I really do enjoy doing this I really don't have to worry about speeding it up and you get to kind of relax and see what I'm doing the videos are a little longer so they do take longer to process when I do upload I'm just gonna take a quick break here alright so quick break there uh, now this is the tricky part uh, breasts are always gonna be tricky for me <laughs> Uh, you want it to look somewhat realistic, and I know that the figure I'm using is not a realistic uh, body. But you want it to be as... You know, the female form is tricky. Uh, especially in comic book world. It can be uh, somewhat weird when when you draw women uh, super exaggerated bodies, and I really don't have a preference. Uh, some artists go a little a little crazy with the body types, but that's all down to artist interpretation. So I'm not in the camp to tell an artist how to draw women. You know the unless it's super anatomically incorrect but if the story calls for it then you know who am I to tell them to change it <laughs> and then right here is where you can kinda add the little details of the clothing uh, it looks like uh, the doll has somewhat like of a corset but we are gonna make her a little thicker we still use somewhat the same proportions uh, she is turning so that can get a little tricky so right here you can add the folds in the clothes and then here the hip hip bone and then the, the thigh you want to have a smooth motion when you draw the thigh because you are going to be drawing that same line again when you go to the ink stage and the glutes the glute can be tough because just a little wonky line and it can look off so and we probably might not get to the color stage uh, in this video. This is more just a relax and chill and sketch. Uh, I just don't think I can hold a, a, a marker steady enough right now. And this is where you want to look and see uh, if anything looks a little off. I can see a couple things. Um, but again, this is just the sketch stage. You know. And, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. So even though the hair is going to be here, I still want to draw the shoulder. So I know where that shoulder is going to lie. And then the same thing with here, we want to draw the line where the shoulder meets the neck. And we can cover it up later with, with, with the drawing of the hair. And then you want a good point, little pointed elbow there, because a feminine elbow is a little pointier. And this is where maybe get a little lower with this arm, just to match the other side. 
then one you can practice your line just kind of making that motion in that way and another motion just practice that line and then just the fold in the arm And then now we can draw the hair. And it's going to wrap around the ear. Castlevania lullaby music. You can't beat that. Very soothing, very relaxing. I got my uh, relaxing voice today. The best way to get over the stress is to kind of listen to some relaxing music. <laughs> kind of stinks that, you know, normally I don't have my high energy. Uh, not having the high energy is a bummer, but I feel like this is very relaxing. And I hope you guys can relax too. One of the things about art is it could either be relaxing, stress reliever. And this is where I talk about where I talked about not necessarily going crazy with it, just being as loose as possible. Because these strands of hair you're gonna go over with pen anyway, so and then here the the cuffs. Cause she's got the Playboy bunny look. And then the hands. The hands are a tricky part because feminine hands are very different from masculine hands. She's got them folded. So one thing, if you want to practice hands, do not practice them folded. It's a bad habit that you want to get out of early. Uh, drawing hands in different poses and I'll tell you one thing, if you do practice hands, uh, your art will grow just from practicing hands because it's such a complex uh, part of the body, just like feet. So if, if you get a good rhythm down drawing hands, then eventually everything else will fall into place. I've never met an artist that couldn't draw hands that can't draw anything else, you know, they, they can draw buildings and and I made that mistake of not drawing hands early on and it took me a while to finally get out of that that bad rhythm of not drawing hands so this one is in a different position but the same concept And that could be the tough thing about drawing a statue is uh, the proportion might be off compared to how you're drawing it. But now, if you're happy with it, you can go to the ink stage. I'm just adding a little bit more detail. Uh, like the eyelashes. Well, Dragon Ball eyelashes are a little weird, so... Akira Toriyama draws the eyelashes on the sides. Obviously because their eyes are different than, you know, real, real eyes. And then we can just lightly shade in the pupils just so you know where they're gonna, gonna land. Now, now you have an idea of where where you're going to start the ink. Uh, I'm going to use a .3 liner just to start lining it out. <clears throat> this is where you want to be as steady as possible. You don't want to ruin all that time you spent sketching. And 
I would draw the hair first just so that you know where everything's gonna fall underneath it's, it's the same concept as drawing digitally is drawing with layers unless you're doing comic book art where you're drawing you you line it out first so the bulk of the work is going to be done under the, the line layer I'm going to take a quick break here, just give me one second. So now I'm just going to continue lining it out. And this is one of the weird aspects because you're taking a 3D, a 3D image such as a toy or a figure hopefully I didn't trigger anybody by calling it a toy <laughs> uh, and turning it into a 2D image so this is where I say some liberties can be taken Stop talking for a little bit just so we can enjoy the soothing sounds of video game lullabies. <laughs> Want to match the ears here? Kind of made that mistake. I didn't take my own advice there. There is some hair behind her. We can add that after we get the ears put in. Just a little bump back here just to show that there's more hair. Try not to move around too much either because my my chair makes a lot of noise. And this is one of the downfalls of the Copic multi-liner. The tip does bend a bit. I've said that in previous videos as well. You can see the bend. Can't see it on the camera, but when I'm doing the stroke, you can kind of see where it is bending. And I'm lining the hair out because I'm going to mostly do a lot of the detail with color, so I'm not too worried about the detail inside the hair. I'm just going to start the eyebrows. And I think it'll be good to kind of take, uh, do this in parts, because it'll kind of give me a chance to recover from the procedure. And because I, I like to have some high energy, <laughs> I feel kind of neutered today. I 
like it, it can be a little tricky drawing around lines that you already put down you don't want to go over those same lines and then you can you can line it with the pen it just tells me where I'm gonna have to blacken it later it can look a little weird right now but it's okay and then a little indent for the nose and then here inside the mouth you can use color to kind of make it pop and then right here we got some more hair keep on lining the soothing tunes now, I'm not going to add a lot of the detail on the breasts uh, I'm going to do most of that with with the marker And here I'm already shortening the breast a little bit just to give it a little bit more proportion. You can add the the armpit uh, groove here and then one nice stroke for the arm and we want to add a little bit of a body fold there. Because the body's contorting. And this would be the back. And there's a little bunny bunny tail there. And we can do a lot of detail with, with the marker on that. just a little couple lines in there just to convey the the waxiness of the of the leather and what's nice is that it is black so you can kind of mess around with techniques to make it look like leather or latex or whatever spandex <laughs> And then the glute, meeting up at the glute here. And then you can add the crease there. And because we made her a little thicker than the statue, you can start the thigh here. It's not as thick of a line as I would like. Just like I said, the pen tip is a little bent. But I'm working with what I got right now. <laughs> I haven't been to the art store in a while. It's one thing I'm going to miss when brick and mortar goes away is physically going into a store and getting my my tools. And you see that that's not a very good line. I'm going to have to switch to a different pen here. My trusty 3.5. That line is so much better. 
You see, I'm still making mistakes, and I think that's just from the shaking of the machine. <laughs> but I always say shaking is kind of a learning experience. Uh, back in 2017, when I had my, when I had the, sh the stroke, before the stroke happened, I was having really bad tremors, and I had to draw with with a really bad shake. And I, I think when I came out of that that whole situation, I felt like my lines were a lot sturdier than they are than they were before. So always look on the bright side, you know. <laughs> Now we got most of it lined out. All right, just give me one second here. All right, now I'm working on the cuffs. And again, this is it, it's hard turning the 3D statue into a 2D image so you have to do it justice and this is the pose this hand is farther away so it, it makes sense for the fingers to be a little the hand to be a little smaller That popping you hear is just from my soda can. Alright, so she is all lined out. Uh, now I gotta wait for it to dry and then we can erase it. Erase all the pencil. And it'll be ready. Uh, I'm gonna darken some areas up with the ink, let it dry, and then we can do a part two when I color it. So now we're gonna add a little bit of black to to the latex here, and this is gonna help the color come out a little bit more. I'm gonna use my trusty brush pen, and right here it doesn't have to be perfect. want to give it some life. Be careful with the hair. This can be really calming too. And that way, when we do the color in the next day or two, uh, all the black should be dry. You don't have to worry about the marker smudging the image. And you can leave some reflective on the edges here. Kind of follow the same path that you took with the pen. Never notice how much the Mario song sounds like an old uh, 
<laughs> uh, Old West canteen, cantina type music until you hear it in lullaby form. I wish I knew about this music when my kids were babies. <laughs> I'm a little old for that now. Though I did, this is how I found out about this music. I was driving back from a Comic Con and it was pretty far away. I think it was like four or five hours. And my kids came with me and one of them was like, Daddy, I can't sleep. And you could tell she was tired because we were, we stayed the next day. And so we kind of did some stuff around town. So she was, she was exhausted. And I was just like, well, let me play some uh, lullabies. And she loves the Wiley, uh, Mega Man 2 Wiley stage music. Don't know how, because she's never played Mega Man in her life, but I think I played enough of the uh, that music where she, she knows where it's from now. I think this is the Punch-Out theme now. We can blacken out the buttons here. Because I do use that whiteout marker. So a lot of these areas we can you, you can hit with the whiteout marker later. I'm not too worried about it. Definitely punch out. <laughs> This is where you got to be careful because it, it will be wet. So if you're going to do a pass through, and moving your arm over here, just make sure that you don't hit it. See how I move my arm around the picture? Normally, if I'm not recording it, I would just turn the image. But I don't want you guys to get seasick watching me draw. <laughs> so I'm going to do my best to not touch the wet area. Because this brush is really wet. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but... This is where calligraphy... My calligraphy classes came in handy. So I'm able to use the brush above the paper and not rest my hand over it. And that's a good, um, good uh, practice, too. Uh, if you notice that you drag your hand Lefties might have a little problem with that, but if you notice you drag your hand across the paper, lifting the lifting your hand and kind of, it, it does help the stroke of your hand because you don't want to do this. You kind of want to use your hand, your whole arm rather. And right before I let it dry for the night, just want to bold out these the outline a little bit because one thing I did notice you know with Copics is that the line does not blow out but after you dry you can see a lot of um, areas that you can hit very well I'm gonna go to a thicker marker 0.5 my trusty restored pen I, I restored this in a how to replace knit um, Copic nibs video and you can see here I smudged it a little bit you can always see how much you smudge if you look under your hand. It's not too bad. And this is where you can thicken out the hair too. And this is not going to be the same for every picture. I would say with anime, 90% of the time, you want to thicken that hair out. Because with anime, it's the color that pops the most. 
you ever watch an anime and the, if the color, colors are really muddy, it's just not fun to watch. Uh, I think Ninja Scroll's the only one that uh, gets a pass, and that's just because of how bloody it is. Uh, but I think one of the intriguing things about Dragon Ball is just with how colorful it is. Especially Super. Super is so colorful. Even in the very dark Trunks Saga and Super, colors pop, but if you notice whenever they go to Trunks' timeline, everything's very muddy. And I think that's just to convey how dire the situation has gotten. Now here I am kind of jolting my, my wrist, and that's just because of the angle, but normally you want to go like this. Keep your arm steady. And just try to use your hand and arm in one motion. And I'm, this is already pretty much dried, but you see the texture. And even if the texture doesn't match enough, you can use hatching techniques. I'll go over that in another video, but you can go in the direction. Obviously, she's very... Uh, very voluptuous, so you want the clothes to match that voluptuousness, if that's the word. <laughs> I'm making up words, too. And then we can, because this is where the pen started to really die on me. You see the difference between the SP line of Copic Multiliners. This one I'm very heavy with, and the tip has lasted me uh, quite a bit. I think I replaced it two months ago, and I've been using it nonstop on a lot of speed drawings for this very reason, and it's lasted me. Whereas I have another 0.5 of the regular line, which is these gray ones, and I have already bent the tip. So, you, you do get what you pay for. So I want to thank everybody for watching uh, this quick sketch. Uh, probably in the next few days, I'll do the color version. It'll be a part two. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, I'm going to be doing like a big... Uh, piece with a lot of different YouTubers, uh, you know, personal friends of the channel, uh, where I'm going to be putting them in a Super Smash Brothers type uh, type arena. So uh, look out for that. Uh, that's going to take a while, so I'm going to be doing that in parts. Uh, but we're going to be coloring this up in the next few days. Just let it dry, and then we can erase the pencils. But hopefully you enjoyed that video, and uh, see you on the next one. Take care and keep it over 9,000. Get ready for the next battle. It's a discipline.